Okay, so I know we talked about uh, right-sided heart failure uh, and CHF uh, here and how the increased hydrostatic pressures from heart failure on the right side cause the lower extremity edema. Now let's take a look at the left side. Now what happens here? What drains uh, blood into the left atrium? What brings blood here? The pulmonary veins, right? And the blood comes from the pulmonary veins, goes into your left atrium, into your left ventricle, and out to the aorta, right? Well, let's take a look here. The same way we had the chronic ischemic changes to the uh, cardiac myocytes in the right atrium, the same thing can happen to the left um, atrium and left ventricle, right? Chronic atherosclerosis, chronic uh, ischemia, damaging these muscles here, okay? Damaging them. Now, can these muscles contract during systole as well as they did before? No, they can't contract as well. They can't do that. So what happens? All the blood that's coming from the pulmonary veins, okay, can it go easily from the left atrium to the left ventricle and into the aorta? No, it can't. So again, what happens? A backup. We have a backup of blood into the pulmonary veins and into the lungs, right? Into the lungs, right? Okay, we have an increased um, buildup uh, in, in the lungs, okay? Now, when we have a buildup of all that blood going into the lungs, right, um, and the hydrostatic pressure, if you look at it microscopically, right, and you have your alveoli here, okay, if I have a lot of pressure here, a lot of hydrostatic pressure, what's going to happen? The fluid is going to leak out. It's going to leak out into the alveoli and into the basically the, uh, the space between the alveoli and the blood vessels. What does that cause? Pulmonary edema. Okay, That's what pulmonary edema is. Now, what happens in pulmonary edema? Well, if I have my alveoli here and normally oxygen and CO2 are supposed to go back and forth here and there, well, what happens now if I have a bunch of fluid here. Can my oxygen and CO2 go easily through? No. So what happens? You get shortness of breath, right? Shortness of breath because of all that edema here and it's all due to the hydrostatic pressures caused by the heart failure here. Now this is basically a big clinical finding that you find you know and you know uh, and a big thing and it can be easily explained by a very simple physiology concept by just hydrostatic pressure, okay?